When a child experiences the loss of a parent, it's only natural for them to seek something to hold on to as a memory. While photographs and recollections are invaluable, having a tangible item with sentimental value can provide an extra layer of comfort. Such was the case when Weld County Deputy Sam Brownlee passed away, and his son Tanner felt a deep longing to possess his father's cop car. In November 2010, police engaged in a high-speed pursuit of a stolen vehicle in Morgan County, Colorado, with speeds exceeding 100 miles per hour during an hour-long chase. The pursuit eventually crossed into Weld County jurisdiction, where Deputy Brownlee and his colleagues joined in the effort. Despite an unsuccessful attempt to disable the stolen vehicle, the chase ultimately concluded when the suspect's car had a tire blowout. Surrounded by officers, the suspect opened fire, tragically claiming Deputy Brownlee's life. He left behind his second wife, two stepchildren, and two biological sons, Tanner and Chase, from his first marriage. Tanner was just 15 years old when he lost his father, and apart from old photographs, he and his family had few items to invoke memories of their beloved dad. However, five years after Deputy Brownlee's passing, the Weld County Sheriff's Office decided to auction his cop car. The vehicle in question was a Dodge Charger with nearly 150,000 miles on the odometer. The auction's proceeds were intended to benefit concerns of police survivors, COPS, an organization offering support to families of officers killed in the line of duty, families like Tanner, Chase, and their mother. Tanner believed that his father held a special connection to the car, and winning the bid at the auction would hold deep significance for him and his brother. It'd mean a lot to me and my brother, Tanner expressed to WKBW in May 2015. We've been through a lot. Sheriff Steve Reams of Weld County echoed this sentiment, stating, this is kind of the end of Sam's legacy here. It's the last tangible thing we have that he was connected to. Thus, the charity auction was not only meaningful to the Brownlee family but also symbolized a cherished connection to their late father through the vehicle. Tanner had raised $3,000 on a GoFundMe page towards bidding on the squad car, although he had never participated in an auction before. Kelly Blue Book estimated the car's value at around $12,500. Undeterred by his lack of auction experience, Tanner devised a simple plan, observe other bidders and incrementally surpass their bids. I think if it goes past the limit we have, I just have to hope that someone has it in their heart to win the car and give it to me and my brother. We don't really have a backup plan, Tanner candidly admitted. With this plan in mind, he initiated the bidding with an opening offer of $2,500, setting the auction in motion. However, Tanner's initial bid was swiftly surpassed, and the subsequent bids far exceeded Kelly Blue Book's valuation, doubling and quadrupling in rapid succession. When the price reached $50,000, it became evident that Tanner had reached his limit, and his hopes of acquiring his father's car seemed dashed. The final hammer fell when the bidding reached $60,000, and the vehicle was sold to a local rancher named Steve Wells, a stranger to Tanner before the auction. Little did Tanner and his family know that they were about to cross paths with this rancher in a most remarkable way. As fate would have it, Steve Wells had a meaningful gift he wanted to bestow upon Tanner. Immediately upon receiving the keys to his newly acquired vehicle, the generous rancher turned to the person he had outbid and said, Tanner, here's your car. Remarkably, Steve had just spent $60,000 to gift a complete stranger a car. Tanner was taken aback by the unexpected turn of events. When a reporter inquired if he had known his bidding competitor would hand him the keys at the auction's conclusion, the son of the fallen deputy replied, Nope. I shook his hand, and I didn't know. Overwhelmed by the gesture, Tanner added, It means so much to me. Initially, Steve Wells declined interviews regarding his decision to gift a car to a total stranger, preferring the spotlight to remain on Tanner. However, the generous rancher eventually broke his silence, explaining his motivation. He told CBS4 in May 2015, it never crossed my mind not to. I wanted to hand the keys to that young man. While $60,000 is a substantial sum of money for most individuals, Steve's perspective differed. 
He derived a significant portion of his income from a 32,000-acre ranch in northern Colorado, but he had also earned income from another source in the past. Several years prior, a portion of his land was found to contain oil and gas, resulting in its transformation into a drilling site. It's no secret we've made a lot of money, Steve acknowledged. I have been able to donate to things in a way that financially I never dreamt I could have, and that's important to me. His commitment to assisting those in need stemmed from a personal experience in his childhood. I'm adopted, Steve revealed. Despite the potential for a different life trajectory, he was blessed with the greatest gift of all, a loving family. He stated, I was adopted by outstanding parents. I couldn't ask for anything more, and I've always felt that need to give back. Steve continued, here was a man who lost his life as a deputy sheriff for the people of Weld County. His son wanted something to remember him by, and the fact that he could sit behind the wheel of the car and look through the same windshield his dad did was extremely important to me. It was just something I felt I had to do. In reflecting on the moment he handed Tanner the car keys, Steve concluded, when the auction was over, and I walked up and I handed him those keys. That is a lifetime moment. It was for him, and it was for me. That was a moment that, for me, meant everything. After driving off in his father's car, Tanner made a heartfelt pledge to donate his $3,000 GoFundMe earnings to the COPS charity as well.